Welcome back, everybody. So the uncertainty of whether or not the games would be held, having to perform without the support of fans cheering you on, uh, Tokyo 2020 has presented more pressure than usual for athletes. So how have they been able to manage? Um, and those that have not been, how do they cope after? Nicholas Powell, sports psychologist, is joining us now via Zoom to discuss. Nicholas, good morning to you, and thank you for being with us. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be a part of this. Morning, yes. Nicholas. It's good to have you. I, I often think about, you know, how tough a, a, a job this is for athletes. I mean, people watch, and a lot of us are armchair analysts, and we think they should have done better in this. And, I mean, in this day of social media, they get so much criticism, not all of it con constructive, um, on social when they perform. How important is, is sports psychology um, as a tool for our athletes? And do, is it something we expose our athletes to? Is it something that we're, we're big on here? We are getting more comfortable accepting support, but it's still there's a lot more that needs to be done because we have, we t tend to take a reactive approach to the mental side of training when a lot of time our athletes underperform. It's not because they're not physically ready, but mentally something went wrong and it caused them not to show up on the day as we would call it. And we're working hard. I am working hard. There are a few other sports psychologists who are working hard to get Jamaica on a whole and the Caribbean to accept sports psychology and the importance of it as a proactive tool and not a reactive tool. Mm -hmm. And so the, the pushback or the drawback would be what? The stigmatization of it? Yes, definitely. Wow. Um, people associate psychology with mental illness and not mental health, which is two different things. Mental health is our overall well-being, mental, um, how you function. Everybody have mental health issues at some point in life, but mental illness is where when something actually goes wrong and you need medication or whatever. So when some people don't seek the support because of fear of what somebody will say, that they have a mental illness and it's not really the case. Yeah. Simone mentioned the, the Olympics and before Simone Biles, Naomi Osaka pulled out of Wimbledon when she said she did not want to talk to the press. And they were yes. saying, well, you have to talk to the press. And she said, no, well, I'm gone. And she left. What would you have said to her? Stay, deal with it, and show her a way how to come, come out of it? Or would you agree and say, well, if you can't handle it, it's all right. You, you, you can leave the, 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 the competition. What would you have said? It's important that we provide, validate what the athlete is experiencing. A lot of time we don't validate it, and we try to tell them what to do. Is validate and try to provide support and help them to see ways of how to cope with it. And if they're not able to cope with it, then we, we move to that, the best, what's in the best interest of the athlete. Because if the athlete is under stress and pressure, they're gonna go out there and they're gonna be uncomfortable. And the more uncomfortable they are, is the more it affect their performance. So our job as mental coaches and coaches and administration is to provide support for the athlete to make sure that they, they are as comfortable as possible yeah. so they can focus on their performance. I, I hear so, that. I'm sorry to jump in. I hear that. But again, how would you deal with, in this particular instance, would you say, I mean, she's, she's a professional athlete, she's earning money. What would you have said to her? Obviously, you'd want to find out you know, why she is where she is or where she was. But what would you have said to her? whatever is in your best interest, because at the end of the day, performance is what's important. Important, and if you cannot function to even concentrate on your performance, then it don't mean nothing you having a great interview and underperforming. Yeah, especially if you're jumping off a bar that is 10 feet in the sky. Yeah. I mean, you risk physical injury because of what's going and on. Losing, and losing um, awareness of where you are. She could have hurt herself. Yeah. Yeah, so, situation. so, so you, you, speak, you speak about the athlete doing what's in his or her best interest, right? Simone Biles made a decision that she thought was in um, her best interest, but she came under so much fire. Uh, I remember Piers Morgan calling her a quitter. You know, champions don't quit. And I was like, my God, the world is harsh. 
In this yes. age, Nicholas, when social media, I see some of our athletes posting, I'm so sorry I wasn't able to. I saw one athlete, a athlete post, I feel like I'm in love with um, people who are not in love with me. I mean, it's really distressing um, when you feel like you put, on, put out your all, but we're so spoiled, we want to see a goal or a silver and it doesn't happen. And then everybody, or it feels like the weight of the world is coming down on our athletes. What kind of toolkit as a psychologist would you give them? What are the elements in that toolkit that would help them to navigate this kind of minefield and in this current dispensation? Great question. This is where it's important for us to start implementing mental coaching before competition to help prepare our athletes. So when they get to a situation and they don't have the performance that they want, they're familiar with a mental coach who they, they have been working with and have some tools that it doesn't affect them as much. Athletes are already beating up on themselves when they underperform. So for them to look on social media, back in the day it wasn't as much, but when you look on social media and see some of the character attacks, it, it's difficult for the athletes and it's very hard. And it, some athletes can end up going into deep depression that can be detrimental to not just them, but to their career. So the key is providing that support for the athletes, coaches, check in with your athletes and help them to understand that people are gonna say whatever they want to say. People are gonna have negative comments. And if we focus, if we value ourselves based on what other people think of us, then we're going to be disappointed every time, yeah. whether we perform well or not. You mentioned preparing them before, but finally, I mean, we also need to, I don't know, some people might have got my little PTSD from this. So post-counseling might also be important, especially for the folks who didn't do as they would have wanted to. Yes. As a mental coach, I not only work with my athletes who perform well, uh, poorly at the competition in, in their standard, but also the people who perform well, because we also have to teach them how to deal with success so they can not let it get to them head and, and cause them to be more conceited than confident. Yeah. Gotcha. And there's a borderline between that, because when you're conceited, then I think I don't have to work as hard for the next one. Yeah. Final, no. final question from me, Nicholas. If, if someone right. called you and said, speak with Simone Biles, is it a one-off? Is it a... Um, every day you talk to her for two weeks. How long do you think you need to speak with someone like that who is in this issue to get them back to where they ought to be? There's an assessment that we do and, and it determines on the areas that needs the, the, the assessment. I, I try to meet with my athletes once a week. Depends on how intense it needs to be. Or we can do every other week. It just depends. But we just, especially at the highest level, most of the time, the athletes know what they're doing, so we are giving them assignments to work on. And I see where Elaine talked about what she does for herself. Mm -hmm. So it's just providing them with tools mm -hmm. that they can practice and then report back in a week or in two weeks, depending on the, the, the desired needs. All right. To Thank help them develop it. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks for speaking with us, uh, Nicholas Powell, sports psychologist. Before we go, I just want to say good morning to Olivia Rose, who's a, another sports psychologist who was the first one I worked with and who was the first person who made me realize how important it's, I think it's sports critical. psychology is. Yeah, she, she's absolutely critical, amazing. Critical. And, and I've seen her work and I've seen the success from what she's done mm -hmm. with athletes. So good morning, uh, 